Hello everyone, I hope you are having an amazing week and if you're new to the channel, I'd just like to welcome you guys and if you're struggling a little bit, I just want to share this quick little Bible verse that I've actually had on my chest and my heart recently. It's actually from Romans 5 and reads, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So just know that just because you might be going through a rough season right now, there is hope and you will come out of it on top even better than you were before. Each day we get a new chance to start again and that's just the word that has been kind of put on my heart and I just wanted to share it with y'all. I don't know who needed to hear that, but Bowtie Fragrance Guy had said something very similar in one of his videos. He said, when God gives you a word, you best share it. So I'm just doing that and hopefully this this reaches somebody. Speaking of second chances, here are 10 fragrances that I am glad I gave a second chance. See what I did there? So stay tuned. Ten fragrances I gave a second chance. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that I hated or disliked all of the fragrances at first. I mean some of them are like that but some of them they just either didn't blow me away or something in them just didn't strike my fancy at first. Either way with time our noses can develop and our tastes really change so sometimes by leaving your bottles out they can also mature and smell even better than they did like a fine wine or a mature whiskey. So with the number 10 spot we're talking about Latafa's Badi Al Oud Amethyst. I know I know how can you dislike such a beautiful beautiful and artistic fragrance like this. Initially, when you first spray it, you kind of get a little bit of a harsh synthetic vibe. And to me, when I first tried this out, the first time that I unboxed it, I got sort of a strange petrol and just a rubbery leather accord that just I wasn't really used to. But I do think that this one has definitely grown on me. I think the jasmine and the jammy rose with the oud is something that I really hadn't experienced when I first unboxed this back, I don't know, about a year or so ago. But that was back in my first Middle Eastern fragrance haul video I ever did, and my taste and my nose have completely changed a lot. I can't get enough of that really soft, jammy, sweet, rosy oud, and also that kind of nice woody pink pepper. I'm really glad I didn't sell this one, and this is definitely something I wear when I want something exotic, relaxing, and just really nice and delicate. Beautiful stuff in this one. And that one is Latafa's Body Al Oud Amethyst. So jumping over to a designer fragrance, at number nine, we have Azaro Chrome Aqua. Now, I actually bought this bottle maybe three years ago and something about the chrome line gives me a bit of trauma. <laughs> I remember one time I was actually wearing the original Azaro Chrome for the first time and I developed gastritis as a teen and I was completely nauseous all the time for half a year and I couldn't stomach anything and I decided to give this flanker a try but at the time the basil and the mint were just two notes that I could not stand. Something about the greens and violet leaf kind of reminded me of a dusty cucumber. That sounds like something from Urban Dictionary. <laughs> hey. You want a dusty cucumber? So after a couple of years of sitting on my shelf, I went back and I actually saw that people had compared this one to Aqua de Gio's Profondo and Bulgari Aqua. And now I love both of those. And I actually quite do enjoy this one now. The grapefruit, the vetiver, and the cypress smell really nice and earthy. And the sea notes and the basil here give it a really nice green herbaceous, almost soapy tinge. And I really, really like this one now. You also have a really nice juicy apple that makes it smell kind of green, fresh, and aquatic at the same time. Ultimately, this one is a great office friendly scents. It's sweet and soapy and it's definitely a fragrance that I have been wearing and will continue wearing through my rotation of this summer. And that one is Zara Chrome Aqua. So another designer fragrance that I can't believe I didn't like was Tom Ford Costa Azura. So I actually have a little decant of the OG Costa Azura. This one is the Parfum version, which I actually really like. For this video, I'm going to be holding up this bottle. Ironically, I ended up picking up the perfume version as it's supposed to be even stronger. But in the original Costa Azura, something about the celery seed and incense was so intense that it made me feel kind of sick whenever I smelled it for more than five minutes. I actually bought a full 100 ml bottle at Macy's 
overseas and returned it the next day just because I couldn't wear it. I couldn't stomach the harshness in the summer heat. And I think one of the resins or the olibanum, something in it just did not agree with me. Maybe the mastic. It just wasn't something that I was used to since I had been buying a lot of the fresh aquatics at the time. It also had the agarwood and the musk mallow that just really came off as cloying to me. So now, of course, I think this is a masterpiece. I think there's a solid balance between the citruses and the sort of dusty smelling woods that give you a sense of maturity and confidence when you wear it. I actually recommended this one to one of my coworkers who was looking for a nice, classy, clean, everyday kind of mature fragrance that most people would not be wearing. And I'm really glad that I came around. I gave it another sniff. And honestly, this one just slowly grew on me. And now I love this one to no end. Ironically, I actually have been wearing this one to the office that the same guy works. So two people were in this. <laughs> anyway, that's Tom Ford's Costa Azura. Now this one is sort of in the between realm of Middle Eastern and designer. You could argue it's either one of those. And this one is Dolce & Gabbana's The One Royal Night. At first sniff, I thought this was pleasant enough to add to my purchase. I actually bought a whole bunch of fragrances from a local seller on Facebook. He gave me a really good price on this one, but the weather was really hot when I tried it on and something about the cardamom and the nutmeg and basil was just too much in the heat and once it sort of dried down I didn't really like it all that much. The heat kind of spoiled my initial experience on this fragrance. I also remember distinctly thinking that this one smells really really similar to the one and it just didn't wow me enough to warrant keeping in my collection but after some time on the shelf I actually think it matured a bit and now it smells really really classy. It's got that same kind of cardamom amber and sandalwood from the OG the one but with a bit of oud and labdanum here. I think this one actually is a lot more suitable for the spring and the fall since the ginger and the tobacco are cut back from the original. It's not listed, but I feel like there's a bit of oud in the inclusion of the pear wood accord here. It really gives a nice edge to the original. And I think this one is definitely worth busting out again. And I'm glad I came around to this one. This one is Dolce & Gabbana's The One Royal Knight. So the one Royal Knight doesn't have that much tobacco as compared to the original The One, but if you love tobacco, then you'll love Maison Alhambra's Tobacco Touch. This one is a blatant clone of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vini, but this one has a slight twist. There's so much to love about this one. The Middle Eastern spices, the dried fruits, cacao, and of course, tobacco. Now to me, this one smells like a really sexy chai tea and ginger or maybe turmeric. But when I first tried this one on skin, I severely underestimated the sillage of this one and the performance performance. It was all I could smell for hours and at the time I had intermittent allergies. So though it's not actually listed, I got ginger and clove especially. So personally, both clove and ginger are again some of those things where it can either make or break a fragrance. Whatever it is, whether it's a pie or a fragrance, too much of it is a bad thing. My first time wearing this one, my initial impressions were, yep, this has way too much. I was definitely impressed by the composition, but those two notes just spoiled it for me. Much later, I did try this in a much cooler place and I wore it to think Thanksgiving dinner, but this one is a 10 out of 10 under the right circumstances. If it's too hot, do not wear this one. Do not overspray it. But this one is perfect for a date, especially because it's that sexy tobacco and chai kind of vibe in this one. But do not underestimate the strength of tobacco touch. Mm. Sexy. So back over to designer, this one is an underrated cheapie. Initially, I wasn't in love with this one, but to me, this was basically just that. It was a pleasant cheapie that smelled like a couple different things at the time, but it wasn't unique enough to warrant me wearing it or keeping it. So fast forward to about two years and I picked this one up from the bottom of my shelf, the land of banished and misfit fragrances. I know you all have that, whether or not you just slide it in the back or at the bottom of the shelf. It's a thing. Picked it up, I sprayed it just for fun, and I was actually blown away. And I'm talking about Davidoff Champion. Now the bottle was part of the reason that I hated it at first. This looks so out of place and tacky on my shelf of other fragrances, and it's sort of an eyesore. It's kind of tacky. It's, it's Davidoff. <laughs> This one is very bergamot and lemon heavy with a nice mossy wood in the base. And it's also got a little bit of clary sage in there that kind of keeps it herbal and kind of opens up your airways. It smells really sporty and modern. But if you spray this in the super hot heat, it completely transforms and it smells amazing. To me, this one feels like a cross between Versace Eros and Creed Aventus, somewhere in between. You have the energetic lemony sweetness from Eros, but you also have that really sexy kind of Aki Gala wood vibe from Aventus and something like maybe Mont Blanc Explorer. Seriously, I've been reaching for this one a lot recently. I spray this on myself when I'm going to go wash my car or run a couple errands, but this one actually is a lot of fun to wear. And underneath that hideous outside, you have a surprisingly wearable fragrance underneath. Also, you can find it for like 20 bucks for this giant bottle. 
it is what it is. Actually, now that I think about it, if you just stick this upright like that without the cap, that might look way better. Why didn't I do that? That one is Davidoff's Champion. Now this next one is also quite an affordable cheapie, and this was actually found at a lot of rack stores in the past. This one is Michael Kors Extreme Blue. Now these were super popular a few years back, and at the time I purchased this one, I wasn't all that impressed. But this one's definitely an herbaceous and forest-like vibe with juniper cypress and a little bit of blue kind of citrusy vibes from the bergamot, pink pepper, and the cardamom. And it honestly gave me a little bit of a headache. I think the sesame note that was included here just didn't sit right with my sweet aquatic and Versace Eau Fraiche loving note at the time. Now, especially in the cool weather, it comes off as sort of a nice soapy, heavy juniper vibe with that musk and cashmere and sage. It just is a really, really nice combination. In the summer, it becomes far sweeter and you get a bit of a smoky marshmallow vibe mixed with a beautiful green carnivorous note. This one really surprised me because it's definitely darker than some of the other typical blue freshies that were popular, you know, now and at the time. But if you like that sort of calming, sweet and soapy blue herbal kind of fragrance, then this one might be up your alley. I know I definitely came around and was glad when I picked this one up again and gave it another sniff. And that one is Michael Kors Extreme Blue. So this one's also a designer fragrance, but this one's a higher tier one in my opinion. I cannot believe that at one time I did not like John Vervedos Artisan Pure. I know, I know. This is a staple for so many people. And honestly, now it's a staple in my collection. But when I blind bought this back in 2017, I wasn't a huge fan of Neroli. Depending on the fragrance composition, it would remind me of something that an older person would wear. Mind you, this was after high school and really at the beginning of my fragrance journey. Plus, I also think I caught a cold shortly after I first tried this and I just had horrible allergies and a negative experience with it. Similar to how you never want to eat the type of food that gives you food poisoning and you just have to take months if not a year you know to try it again. I actually rebought this one last Christmas for about 25 bucks for this 75 ml bottle. It was a bargain and I was afraid that this was going to get discontinued and I thought what the heck I'll try it again and see if I like it. Boy was I glad when I picked this one up again. This is such a clean and musky citrus that is amazing for the high heat. Something about the pedigree the thyme and the majority give it such a nice green pepperiness and when it combines with the ginger and the orange citruses whew, this smells like a really expensive luxury citrus hand soap. I also really appreciate the orris root and the musk here now. I feel like it does make it a little bit more mature but it doesn't make it smell like an old man like I once thought. I don't know what I was thinking. I was stupid years ago. I was a baby. This one I've actually been wearing to the office quite regularly and this one is just amazing stuff. This one is John Vervedos Artisan Pure. Next up is another high-end designer fragrance that is actually discontinued. I'm pretty sure it's discontinued, but you could still pick this one up here and there. And that one's Bulgari's Aqua Amara. This one, I'm still sort of on the fence. Actually, Blind bought this one years ago for like $40. When I first tried this, I immediately thought, oh man, this orange has turned. It smells really funky. It smells sour like funky. I also got a really strange mineralic kind of metallic accord that I couldn't quite put my finger on. And some other people had also pointed that out. I did like the Mandarin and the Neroli, but something in it just turned me off. Some people even said this smells like hard boiled eggs. I never got that, thank God. But whenever I saw this on my shelf, I kept wanting to reach for it and I tried wearing it multiple times. And over the years, I felt my heart slowly start to change towards this one. And I feel like we're on good terms now. On a hot day, this projects like crazy and it lasts a really, really long time. I think this one definitely smells more mature than some other stuff in my collection and most other people's collections. But I think as you wear this one more, you can start to appreciate it. And I know I have. I think pulling out fragrances that you haven't worn in years is a great way to satisfy that mindset of discovering or even purchasing, you know, a fragrance or blind buying without blowing any money. It satisfies that itch. Yeah, this one is just really unique stuff and I'm really glad that I picked this one up again. And that one is Bulgari's Aqua Amara. Lastly, this one I had the most drastic turnaround on. I went from thinking, oh my God, this smells like you just took a whiff of poopery and walked past a dude who sprayed and doused himself with the most intense and off-putting Middle Eastern cologne. I thought this smelled like an old grandparent's house with saffron and synthetic roses. I specifically remember flinching, grimacing, and immediately listing this on eBay minutes after unboxing it. I'm talking about Banana Republic's Food Mosaic. Yep. Again, I picked this up when I was primarily buying freshies or wasn't exposed to any ouds or rose fragrances. I feel like a lot of people fall into the same trap of buying only the blue or aquatic fragrances when starting off since they are easy to pull off. That's exactly what they're made for. They're marketed to people who really just want something pleasing and easy to wear. This was not easy to wear when I first tried it. But when you do this, it's closing your mind off and you really miss out on a lot of really unique fragrance compositions. Now that I've completely embraced heavy ouds, florals, and mid 
Middle Eastern fragrances, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that this is one of the best oud and rose fragrances you can buy for $20, designer, mind you. And you can still find this in rack stores from time to time. Some people are selling this for $50 to $100 on eBay, but there's just something so sexy and mysterious about this one. The plum and the jammy rose mixed with the saffron, cardamom, and agar wood, it gives off a really regal feeling that gives me confidence throughout the day. And honestly, it's sometimes what I need. Just that really nice soft road with touches of creamy oud, and it just smells absolutely high quality and fantastic for the price. It smells like an expensive niche fragrance for only 20 or 30 bucks, depending on where you can find it. So that one is Banana Republic's Oud Mosaic. And that is a wrap. These are 10 fragrances that I've changed my mind about and I'm really glad I gave them a second chance. So how about you guys? Are there any fragrances that you didn't initially love but fell in love with again? Let me know in the comments and I'd love to hear some of your stories. You all are amazing and I hope you enjoy the video and stick around for more videos in the future. I have been Eli with Common Sense and until the next time, bye bye. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm just pumping this one pound Davidoff champion because I'm the champion. I feel like this is a football. This looks like a football.